All right. Well, hello and welcome to Sydney Show with Rorals for yet another episode. And we thought it wouldn't be right not to catch up with our great mate, councillor from the B section, Stuart. Stuart Davies, welcome to Sydney Show Catch Up. Sydney Show with Rorals, how are you, my friend? Having withdrawals, Tim, nice to see you both. How are you? Yeah, we're going well. And alongside him, he's been a steward in the Sydney Show Main Arena for goodness knows how many years. He's an absolute institution. I only get to talk to him at this time of year. So, Chris Eggleton, thanks for joining us. Not a problem, Tim. Thanks for having me. I guess a good Mate, uh, to... first... <laughs> this happens every edition. <laughs> you go, Tim. <laughs> I was just going to ask, Chris, where are you coming to us from, mate? That doesn't look like no Sydney show I've ever seen. No, I'm currently standing on top of the hill um, on my 100 acres at home, which is is uh, between Golgong and Wellington. The best part of this, before I cross back to Lindsay, look how green it is around you, mate. I know. It's absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. It's great to see. Well, I'm curious to know from both of you, what was the catalyst, uh, the moment or the person that got you involved in the Sydney Royal Easter Show? Chris, we've got you on the screen. Let's start with you. Well, to start with, it was my father. Uh, he was involved with Sydney Show for 35 years. I think he was a steward. But my grandfather got him involved, uh, Mr. Roger Watton, who was actually ringmaster for four or five years at Sydney Show and was a councillor for a lot, lot longer than that. And what does an average day look like for you at Sydney Royal Easter Show? And then let's be clear with the audience watching, you don't turn up for one or two days. You turn up for every single day. No, I'm, I'm there for the 12 days, uh, more like 13, because I arrive the day before and leave sort of the morning after. Uh, but I start at 8 a.m. most mornings and I work through until the end of the radio at 7.30 every night. And what do your responsibilities entail? Well, for the first half of the show, I'm a chief steward in the, in the horse ring with, with the light harnesses. Uh, and then I become a, a general steward uh, underneath the chief stewards in the hack ring and a few rider classes and that sort of thing. I'm also helping out, as I said, in the rodeo and the world championship camp drive. So you've got a big, exciting, colourful day every day. Stuart Davies, how does your day compare at Sydney Royal and where did it all begin for you? Well, it all began, I think, for me in terms of my hands-on involvement was um, I was very fortunate to be part of the uh, Rural Achiever competition back in uh, 1992. Not 1892, but 1992. And uh, that started from there um, a wonderful association with the Sydney Show and 23 years straight steward in the beef cattle section so you're now also looking after youth affairs tell us um, what what does that look after what does that encompass so i chair the youth affairs committee we effectively look after the showgirl competition once the uh, zone finalists from throughout new south wales to sydney we look after the final judging and we also look after the rural achiever competition as well Stu, tell me, what for you, or is there a person for you that got you into the, the show, obviously the Rural Achiever, but is there a person today, sorry, I'm going to change my question, is there a person today that when you think of them, you just think Sydney show? That person for me reminds me of Sydney every time. You know, I was thinking about this earlier, Tim. There's, there's, there's two two people that, that I have to say um, evoke those sort of thoughts in me. One is um, Neville Russell. Neville is uh, an honorary councillor. Neville uh, won't mind me telling you that he's 91 years of age. He uh, turns up to all our cattle committee meetings. Um, and the other one is, is Kevin Everett. Both those gentlemen, I think of either of those, and my first thought is uh, Sydney Show, but... Uh, for different reasons, because Kevin's a little bit more mischievous than what Neville is. Chris, tell me, is there a time at Sydney Show or a memory at Sydney Show that sticks with you as a really favourable memory? Something that, that'll go down in depth of time, looking back at over all the shows you've been to. What, what's a really special moment? Back in 2003, my second year as a steward, 
uh, they have a, a class called the judges and stewards riding on the flat class. And that year I actually won it. One of the best. Yeah, it's pretty special, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Linz, I was just going to say, I think uh, I got in trouble in that class for maybe trying to bribe Lord Bestie. Do you remember that one? I, I seem to, to have an inkling that, yeah, that, that there were a couple of bribes growing around in, in certain, um, certain places. But, I mean, that's half the fun of it. It's the main reason of the class is to show the competitors and the, and the onlookers in the, pub, in the general public watching that we as stewards might have a little bit of an idea what we're doing when it comes to competing. One of the things I love about Sydney Royal is there's a great mix of history and heritage and also innovation. So um, that's, you can see that in the main ring with uh, the style of competition we run and the way that it is run. But uh, we've had the advent of the iPads, for instance, in capturing the many thousands of results and getting those efficiently and effectively up into broadcast and around to the results team as well. So I'm wondering, Chris, can you tell me something about the heritage of Sydney Royal that you just love and something that has happened maybe in, the, in more recent years that you think is a great adaptation of the show? Well, the heritage of the show, it's, it's always been intended to bring the best of the best uh, into one area, whether it be cattle, sheep, horses, uh, grains, everything from the bush, uh, and, and to enable the people in the city to see what it's about, to put it in one area and let everyone come and have a look. I mean, we're, we're nearly at 200 shows. Uh, for the Sydney Royal Easter Show, and that's that's pretty big. Um, Innovation-wise, I think allowing different competitions into the main ring that that haven't been so. I mean, they aren't 200 years old. There are there are new comps comps coming in, and we're changing all the time to try and fit in with what's happening in, in today's like the way that things are going today. Mm. And how about you, Stu? I think in terms of, of innovation, um, I, more broadly, I think from a technology perspective, it, it's probably got to be Wi-Fi. It's that ability for us to be able to communicate between might be the, the main, arena, main arena and you guys in the in the broadcast box. It might just be at a judging where a ring can contact uh, the announcers. That sort of thing has certainly made uh, life a lot easier than uh, than standing in a ring and waving your hat trying to get the announcers uh, <laughs> the announcers' attention to uh, to get something broadcast. So yeah, for me, it's probably uh, probably Wi-Fi. Um, I recalled the story recently that involves Chris Eggleton actually in my early days of stewarding um, in my 20s where uh, they we had paper that we wrote scores on and torrential rain fell and stuck all the pages together and the task that was required to extract those very official numbers back of wet pieces of paper in the middle of the arena with mud everywhere all in our dryer bones uh yeah it was a bit of a feat so i've got to agree with you i'm loving the technology on grounds these days can i change the tune just for a for a moment and uh Stu is there a favourite show food that you're having withdrawals that you're missing out on this year? Tim, it, it's probably a really boring answer, but my go-to when I'm racing between judging moments or something like that is just purely a good old bucket of hot <sighs> doused in salt, uh, salt and vinegar. That for me is just my go-to. And Whilst readily available, I love them at Sydney Show. And when you've got that much vinegar, the bottom falls out of the, uh, the cardboard. I think, I think you're onto something. We've had Dagwood Dogs, I said cheese on the stick. But I think my quota of cans of Coke and 10 buckets of hot chip is certainly down over this Easter than it has been on any other year. You'll come out of this period of isolation fitter than you've ever been, Tim Drevin. <laughs> That's right. And uh, Chris, is there a favourite go-to food for yourself? Look, I mean, there's there's that much food given to the officials down underneath in the muster room, but there's just opposite the horse superintendent's office, there's a little coffee hut, and they also also do bacon and egg burgers, 
and they are to die for in the morning. They are probably the best thing on the showground, in my opinion. Do you think, Lindsay, because I've seen him there before, it's maybe helping Chris soak up some of the evening's entertainment after the show ring closes each afternoon? Well, that was a good leading because I wanted to ask them both to finish this question, which was finish this statement, which is the 2021 Sydney Royal Easter show won't be a show without dot, dot, dot. And I was hoping Chris would say a two-step on the dance floor at the Cattlemen's, but I'm curious to know what you'd both respond to that with. Well, I think, Linz, um, yeah, a two-step on the dance floor, either at the Cattlemen's or the members. Um, it, it won't be the 2021 show or any show for that matter without without a two-step, that's for sure. <laughs> Agreed. Tough question. Um, I think I think for me, it's it's that final final day, final function, and uh, leaving the showground absolutely exhausted after uh, uh, an incredible an incredible show. So that's probably the thing for me. I want to ask you about the next generation because uh, we've got a lot of young people that were looking forward to going to this year's show as state finalists in various competitions. But it's probably a good time to cut to Tim Drevman because we do have next generation now. Um, popping in for a cameo. This, this doesn't happen, obviously, at Sydney, but yes, my daughter Bexley's just come out. We're, we're filming at home. And I think, for me, if you could look at any positive, this will be the first Easter that Bexley and I have together. Um, it'll be the first Easter we've had at home for I can't remember how many years. And and for me, if you've got to take the the, the shine of not being at the show, well, it's thought we get all this amazing family time and being forced to lock down. This is this is amazing time for us to have with our children and, and families. And I think that's what we take. Linz, I think the 2021 show will not be the show without the people because that's what we're really missing, missing all those amazing people that we get to see each and every year. So, Stu, what are they Tim, doing about those comps? Yeah. Sorry, what are they doing about the, the showgirl and rural achiever competitions? Mm. Look, um, we we um, we agonised over this um, at a committee level. Um, we decided fairly quickly that the rural achievers, we could just simply roll them into 2021. The bulk of their, their competition and the bulk of their... Um, award, if you like, is spent around the show, understanding the show, learning behind the scenes and taking as much back to their, their local show societies as, as they possibly can. That wasn't a, a, an overly difficult uh, decision for us. What was harder was the showgirls because already we know that there's, there's country shows, local shows that are having their local showgirl competitions with a view to 2021. And as, as you all know, and, and the audience knows, Showgirl is something that rolls around basically uh, nearly you know 11 months of the year. So we took the decision with that out of equity and sort of, I suppose, playing what is in front of us at the moment and no one really knows how long this is gonna go for, to do the same thing with, uh, with the Showgirls as we have with Rural Achievers. We've rolled them into 2021 um, and we've done that with the support of the Agricultural Societies Council, who, of course, control um, and oversee the, the local show judging as well as, as well as the zone judging. We just think it's a, the most fair and equitable way of dealing with it. Um, mm. And giving it'll be such a shame for any of our finalists to miss that, that Sydney show experience that uh, you can't replicate in any other way. Can I say then on behalf of those young ladies that are missing out on Sydney Royal this year, thank you so much for that decision because it would be a travesty for them to miss out on the Sydney Royal opportunity. It's such a coup to be one of the very few girls that gets through to Sydney Royal. It's a formative experience and I think uh, it's a brave decision by the RAS and the ASC to uh, roll it over onto next year and, and they'll be grateful for that decision. Guys, if I could take it to just say, uh, Chris, thanks so much for climbing up the top of the hill. I'm assuming you did that to get the mobile service. It's been clear as uh, crystal all afternoon. So, mate, uh, thanks for climbing to the top of the hill and joining us here this afternoon. Mate, miss catching up for that run that we normally have down in the uh, that little quiet room down the back underneath that only stewards and judges get to know about. And look forward to one next year with you. Indeed. Thanks very much, Tim.
And Stuart, it's been an absolute pleasure for you to join us. I know normally you join us on uh, Grand Parade Day and no Grand Parades this year. It certainly is a, a sad feeling for us to be thinking that. But, uh, mate, 2021, bring it on bigger and better than ever and it's going to be an amazing show. Tim, I'm really excited about 2021. Yes, I mean, we would be probably getting ready for a Grand Parade in the next hour or so under normal conditions. But I really think we're going to bounce back in such a positive fashion. The exhibitors are going to come back bigger and better than ever and uh, I can't wait for 2021. Linz, they always say distance makes the heart grow fonder, but I think it also makes the heart want it a lot more. So I, I'm really looking forward to seeing these two gentlemen next year at the show, if not before. Indeed, and we'll see you all. Thanks for joining us as well to all our viewers. We've had massive amounts of views on these videos. They're a bit rough and rustic and ready to go, but um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you all in the flesh at the 2021 Sydney Royal Easter Show.